Our first questioner is Jane Mercer. She's the co-chair of the Metro Coalition for Better Child Care. She's been director of a child care center in downtown Toronto for the last 15 years and serves low-income families and is on the board of uh, the Metro Child Care Campaign 2000. Jane, please tell us who you're addressing your, to whom you're addressing your question. Okay, well I would first. like to uh, address this question directly to Ms. Minna, who has um, participated in our government. The 1984 Abella Report on Equality and Employment called child care the ramp that provides equal access to the workforce for mothers. Since then, every federal election has promised action on child care, but these promises have not materialized. Instead, the 1996 elimination of the Canada Assistance Plan eradicated all federal dollars for regulated child care, and in most provinces, child care has been cut back, reduced, or deregulated. Virtually all forward-looking industrialized nations now have child care policies, but for women in Canada, accessible, high-quality child care is a more elusive dream than ever. If elected, what specific actions will you and your party take on this issue of national importance? Well, firstly, it is an extreme national importance to me, and I know it is also to my party. In 1993, we offered to, uh, the, we asked the provinces to establish a national child care program. There wasn't a take-up at that time on that offer because we're looking for national objectives, national principles, not just transferring money piecemeal across the country. So I think we have to have a national child development plan for this country that is consistent right across the country. But we have in the meantime added 6,000 6, 6, Aboriginal child care spaces 16 million dollars for BC improved access to child care was given as an initiative. 1.6 million for national caring health and quality of child care. But more importantly, the government is, is very clearly discussing with the provinces right now to look at a national child, child agenda. The national child agenda does not just include child care, but it includes the child sex benefit, which we've already started. Child poverty being the first piece to be negotiated. But the provinces have agreed that there must be also a national child care agenda and a national child care discussion. Those are the kinds of things that are being discussed now to deal with it. The, the Minister of Health is one of the ministers leading this discussion to get on with it so that women in this country have a choice in their child care, a quality child care for all, for, all, for all children. And this is reinvesting in the families and the, and the community should be involved with the kind of discussion as we go to, towards that process. Because to develop a proper national child children's agenda in this country requires involvement of community, the provinces and the national government. We can't do it piecemeal in a bit here and a bit there. It's got to be comprehensive. So that the first piece was in fact the child poverty piece, the next piece is the child care piece. Okay. Thank you. All right, what, we've, what we've decided is that we will move, each person will answer that question and then we'll get into a general discussion. Ms. McDonough? Well, I'm sure Canadians would be pleased to know that, uh, that the Liberals have in fact uh, uh, a commitment to national child care because it doesn't seem to have been mentioned in uh, Red Book 2 this time we mean it. Um, the NDP commitment is clear, absolutely clear on child care. Our, our program sets out a commitment to 150,000 new spaces by the year 2000. And Judge Abella was absolutely right when she said that child care is key in establishing economic equality for women. It's also critical to giving our children the best possible start in life and very, very important as a strategy for eliminating poverty and for helping families to balance between home and work responsibilities. It's also a very good job generator, which is important to all women in this country. The Liberals' failure to uh, deliver on their child care commitment made in 93 is a shameful betrayal of Canadian children and Canadian families. And I think this fabulous child care advocacy poster really says it all when it says keep the promise. The disgrace, <laughs> the disgrace of the Liberals' betrayal on the National Child Care Program is matched only by their elimination of the 50-50 cost sharing between the federal government and provinces under the Canada Assistance Plan for child care. <laughs> Removing any provincial incentive 
to now move forward on child care. The reality is that today's families are under enormous pressure financially and emotionally. 60% of the mothers with children between the ages of 3 and 5 are working outside of the home. And 72% of the children in childcare in this country are in settings where there are no requirements to meet national standards. My first involvement in political activity over 30 years ago was around child care issues. And my first child was born in 1969, the same year I began to be a child care activist. Can you 30 up? years later, Canada's children and Canada's families are still waiting for a serious commitment to child care in this country. Unfortunately, we don't have the great setup they had in the leaders' debate that was televised, so if people could just glance my way every once in a while and I'll give you your time, <laughs> otherwise I'm going to have to interrupt you. <laughs> okay, then we'll on. We, both the Conservatives and the Liberals had failed to fulfill the promises of an extensive national child care program. It is easy to say that provinces have refused. I know very well that Quebec wanted that money for child care. The Liberals have promised to create 50,000 places at the cost of 750 million, but decided not to do so, and talk now of recycling that money into child allowances or credit fiscal allowances. In Quebec, we don't want national standards. We are not against national standards, but we don't want them to be imposed by Canada. And uh, this doesn't mean that we don't want child care. We have, and in fact, I'm very proud to say that the uh, government, in that period of cuts, of deep cuts, has decided to put more money in child care. There will be an increase in the number of uh, child care places this very year, and an uh, increase is a, a promise of 70,000 more until uh, the year 2001. So, when we talk about child care and when we will talk about poverty, we are driven back to that question of national standards as far as Quebec is concerned. We have fought in the House for money for child care places, but at the same time we have fought against the fact that national standards be imposed on us. So we'll have to go through that again until, until. <laughs> Uh, thanks. Uh, reform offers a fresh approach to child care based on choices. Um, <laughs> current tax laws are currently set up in such a way that parents are encouraged to send their children to institutionalized daycare for financial reasons. Parents who wish to care for their children at home are discouraged to do so, and we believe that the tax laws should not, not be any place for deciding on the choice of child care for your children. To allow for choice in the child care, in child care reform government would extend the child care tax deduction to parents, allow parents to choose whether they want to send their children to daycare or to care for children at home, to make it as fair, fair as possible for families of all income levels, will turn the deduction into a tax credit and make it refundable so everyone gets the savings. Currently the child care deduction is only available for receivable child care and according to Revenue Canada, only 10% of Canadian families claim that deduction. Our $3 billion program will go to 100% of, of Canadian families. In order to give more money to families and in particular spouses, we would increase the spousal amount from $5,380 to $7,900 and it would also equal our new personal exemption um, which levels the playing field. That helps single parents because many of them treat their eldest, eldest child as their uh, deduction. Um, I have lots of friends who would like to have uh, their children cared for by grandparents, co-op with other mothers, 
There are various ways of uh, caring for children other than institutional daycare. What we want to do is make the task system neutral with regard to daycare and give families a choice. Thank you. Okay. Okay, now we're into our period of open discussion. Who wants to start? Yeah, I'd like to ask uh, Maria Minna, uh, on behalf of the Liberal Party, how is she can be so willing to accept the excuse that uh, only 10 out of 12 of the provincial and territorial jurisdictions were on side with moving forward on child care and therefore used it as an excuse for doing nothing? We wouldn't have Medicare in this country today if the government at the time had taken that approach. What the government did was it moved forward with those provinces, starting with the NDP province of Saskatchewan, that were ready to move on a universal Medicare system. And then other provinces came in. And within four years, there was a national universal Medicare system. That's what we need to happen in this country. I think that misrepresenting the facts doesn't help. There were not 10 provinces ready to establish a national child care program. I'll tell you, there were 10 provinces, and I was very involved directly meeting with the child care movement many times in Ontario, in my office, in Ottawa, constantly in my office in Toronto as well. There were not 10 provinces. If there were 10 provinces, we would have done it with respect. Therefore, there were very few interested, and most wanted money, transferred but not to discuss any, any national objectives, any national standards or, or principles. And it seems to me that if we're going to get into it, we ought to at least begin, even if we begin with four or five provinces, begin to lay down a framework of some kind. This is why now we, there is a discussion going on to establish a national children's agenda. The provinces finally have agreed that we need to establish in this country a national children's agenda, which includes the poverty issue as well as, as, well as child care. The two are linked, there's no way of delinking them. And this is the, these are the kind of discussion that we finally have got the provinces to agree, and that childcare will be will be negotiated and will be discussed with principles and objectives, national principles and objectives. There's no point having constantly giving money to Mr. Harris and Ontario and saying, well, here's I don't know, 50 million dollars, do with it what you like, because he's going to fund um, private childcare centers and not the, not keep the school open, the, the child care is attached to the schools, or the not-for-profit child cares, or bring in regulation of any kind. There has to be a, a, a national uh, discussion on this, and, and this is what's happening right now. So that, you can't tell me that there's 10, there were not 10, that it's totally incorrect, and they, and they are factual, you I know that. There were, there were not. There is one main problem that has not been addressed, and it is that Canada, its uh, last government, was very proud of being ahead in the fight against deficits, but it didn't say, and it is not of common knowledge, that Canada is trailing as far as social spending is concerned. Uh, and if there is no political decision or political will to put money in social spending, then we can say in any election whatever we want, but there will not be money enough in child care. The question of the national standards will always be there as far as Quebec is concerned. And no one here will convince me that in Quebec we cannot decide for ourselves what national standards we should have in Quebec as far as child care, uh, daycare is concerned. I'm very proud of what is put in place right now. It is not complete, we don't have enough money, but I think that it is uh, a very... Uh, Good start. Ms. McDonough had her hand. Well, Madame Lama, my concern is that when you uh, uh, say basically, well, we're going to be happy with what we do with, uh, with Quebec and child care, you're essentially saying the rest of you are on your own. And uh, that means that we're uh, at the mercy of the Mike Harris's and the Ralph Klein's of the world. It's a reform party. No. It's a reform 
party that sing these days. If you're young, you're on your own. If you're elderly, you're on your own. If you're poor, if you're an immigrant, if you're a disabled woman, you're on your own. We don't expect the Bloc Québécois to take the same position. Okay, and one one last comment from uh, Ms. Branscombe, and then we're going to have to go. Um, we're going to have to, I, no. I guess I'm, I'm, I don't believe, know. Sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead. We believe this strongly that parenting has values, and the tax system now discriminates against parents that want to choose alternate forms of daycare. Uh, a two-income family, $60,000 a year, pays $7,000 less taxes than a, a, a single-income family um, with the same income. Uh, and we believe that we should applaud parenting, and parenting has value, and our party is firmly committed to encouraging families are a priority. Thanks. Okay, we're going we're gonna to have a brief follow-up, very brief, because we're running late. I just, I just want to say that you may be on top of the deficit, you are trailing on social programs, and you have absolutely abandoned children. We have outrageous levels. We have outrageous levels. They are shameful levels of child poverty. And we know that kids are poor because their parents are poor. And their parents are going to be poor if they can't get to work. And they cannot get to work if they don't have child care. You have promised us a national child care program. We hear tonight your opening words that child care is of national importance that it is of enormous importance to your party. We need to have a national child care program so that every woman from coast to coast can look to this government and her, co her fellow people in the whole of Canada to support her as she goes to work to provide for her child. Okay. I want to respond briefly, very briefly. Okay. The government's commitment is strong. I have worked for the last three and a half years with colleagues of mine inside pushing for these kinds of things. Do you think that the, the child benefit plan happened by uh, happened then? Do you think that we're negotiating now with the problems that all, osmosis we came out of the provinces to decide that suddenly they wanted to have a national child program? It started way back at the Social Security Review as I went across this country with about five or six of other colleagues that got together. We consistently formed ourselves into a lobby in the, in the House to make sure that as soon as money was available, this had to be the first priority. This is why we're dealing very immediately, right away, right now, with child poverty and child care is the piece that, that is going to be negotiated with the National Children's Agenda. This is aggressive work on the part of myself, five other MPs who have worked aggressively on these two issues inside to make sure that the government took action on that, and it is happening. Okay, thank you very much.